Ken Cooper, thank you for spending time with us this morning talking about the Linton case and other cases. My pleasure, but David. But before we begin, I'd like to share some information about um, this series with our, with our audience. Um, we're about to hear from uh, Ken Cooper and some of the work that he's done over the past 40 years um, in system dynamics. Over the past 40 years, uh, Ken Cooper has modeled over 300 projects with a total value of a quarter of a trillion dollars. That's a trillion with a T. And this has been in shipbuilding, including dis um, destroyers, cruisers, assault craft, aircraft carriers, aerospace, the B-2 uh, bomber craft, missiles, radar systems, um, automotive with several new car developments, as well as construction, including huge projects like the Channel Tunnel. Um, Ken and his career have been involved in dozens of disputes and hundreds of projects that involve proactive management as opposed to dispute management. This all started with the Lytton shipbuilding case, which we're going to hear about in just a couple of minutes. Um, and over the past 40 years, has, um, work, uh, Ken has worked with senior executives in Hughes Aircraft, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, Jaguar Cars, Fluor Corporation, um, and many more. In those 40 years, um, project modeling has become one of, if not the most important and studied practice areas in the field of system dynamics, in a large part because of the large benefits that this work um, has brought to clients. What also came was a good reputation for system dynamics in the corporate world, in government, and legal arenas, as well as global recognition for project modeling within the management science field. So I'm very pleased to um, welcome uh, Ken Cooper and starting this off with a chat about the Linton Industry case, the first. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, glad to offer uh, some stories about uh, the, the origins of some of the work that uh, I think is fairly widespread at this point. Uh, the, uh, uh, as you said, David, the, the, the start of all of the project modeling work uh, was indeed the, the, the Lytton work. It was, uh, it is a shipyard, or was a shipyard at the time owned by Lytton, uh, taken over by, uh, uh, from the Ingalls family, and still is known as the Ingalls shipyard. But at the time, uh, the, the shipyard was predominantly doing work for the U.S. Navy, as indeed it, it still is. The two uh, programs that dominated uh, the shipyard uh, at the time, uh, in the 1970s, uh, were first uh, a program called the LHA program, which is a, uh, a helicopter assault uh, ship, something of a small aircraft carrier, and when I say small, I mean it was only uh, 20 stories tall and the length of three football fields. Uh, and uh, a, a class of uh, 30 destroyers, the Spruance class of destroyers, and between them they were, there were billions of dollars uh, involved, and Ingalls uh, or Lytton had the responsibility to uh, both design and build all of the ships. Now, at the, the Defense Department goes through cycles in the style of procurement that it uh, employs, and at the time that these were contracted, they used a form of contracting called total package procurement. Uh, and what that was supposed to mean is that the contractor, Ingalls or Linton, uh, had the responsibility for doing everything, for designing the ships to the specs that the Navy provided, uh, and uh, procuring the materiel, building the, the ships, and getting them into active service in the Navy. Didn't work out exactly the way it was planned, uh, obviously. The, uh, there, there turned out to be large numbers of uh, design changes that occurred uh, that were requested or demanded by the Navy and of course there, the, the arguments may linger to this day as to who was responsible for which changes but nevertheless uh, facing the prospect of an, uh, a cost overrun on the programs that was clearly going to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars the question became uh, the degree of responsibility that the, uh, that the two parties uh, had in that cost overrun. And what it boiled down to was essentially uh, who was going to write whom a check 
and for how much. The, the use, uh, something better than the uh, often fuzzy-minded and sometimes self-serving techniques that were used to, to quantify uh, these impacts uh, on programs, something better than that was needed. And they, uh, the Ingalls uh, turned to system dynamics, and there's a little bit of a backstory there, and perhaps we can uh, talk about that a bit later. But uh, suffice it to say, we uh, we got involved with uh, this work, and it, and very quickly uh, became clear that the uh, something that had never been done before, uh, the use of a simulation model to quantify the damages on one of these uh, program cost overrun cases. Uh, but the method that we decided to employ, which now in retrospect seems obvious, was novel at the time, was to uh, build a design and build the model and uh, validate it and set it up so that the model simulates very accurately uh, the known history of, uh, the, of the programs and then employ the model for one big key what-if question and that is, uh, and this is the key one for the whole case uh, and, and cases like it, uh, what would have been the costs on the program but for the specific changes that were cited by Ingalls in its uh, in its claim, and the aside from issues of of, of in legal entitlement and such, the big uh, unknown for uh, for going into that work was the degree of secondary impact of those uh, changes, and it goes by a lot of different names. And those of you who have been in that world uh, will have heard it referred to as ripple effects or disruption. Uh, the, the, the folks at Ingalls had a more colorful uh, few names for it, but one of which that I can say out loud is uh, death by a thousand cuts. Lots and lots and lots of changes, some of them small, but many of them. So the, uh, uh, this was a model that, that we, when we built it, we had at its core a, uh, a structure that uh, that was the first use, the first design, uh, I remember doing the drawings, of uh, the rework cycle, although the, the name, the rework cycle, came up several years later, and perhaps we'll have a chance to talk about that uh, in another, uh, on another case. But the, uh, the first job in, in carrying out one of these analyses in support of a dispute, uh, the first job of the analyst is to quantify and explain uh, the, the causes of the cost growth. Uh, the second job uh, is to uh, be able to convince uh, the, uh, the listener, the, the fact finder, the, the, the other side uh, of the correctness of the analysis. And if you think about, the, uh, just pause to think about what the level of scrutiny would be and the degree of proof required when you're asking another party, uh, in, in this case, for a $500 million check. Uh, it was, this was a case that was after months of uh, discussion and back and forth uh, after the model, modeling work had been completed and reviewed by dozens of other analysts. Uh, the uh, uh, there came to a point where there was a, uh, a very favorable resolution. Uh, Ingalls received the vast majority of uh, the amounts that they were seeking. Uh, it was uh, entire, a quantification that was entirely based on uh, the system dynamics modeling uh, of, the, of the programs. Uh, in addition to a, a really groundbreaking uh, quantification and settlement. Uh, it allowed the, the Navy and Ingalls to uh, move out of the adversarial uh, positions that they had had because the claim and the dispute process went on for years. 
uh, as, as some of these large cases do. Uh, but what we didn't, did not know at the time was that the, uh, the impact uh, of that work was uh, going to end up extending far beyond those first shipbuilding programs and that, and that one dispute and move into other companies and industries around the world. So kind of one follow-up, um, about how much was that project worth to Lytton? Uh, the, well, the, the settlement uh, was for about $400 million. $400 million. Right. Thank you, Ken. Um, sometime I hope we have a chance to get into that backstory. No, well, happy and, to. And uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you more about some of your other projects. Pleasure. Thank you. you.